everyone, this is Ross, and today we're going to be talking a lot about my raspberries. And my buddy Romeo was over the house a few days ago, and he was asking me and kind of looking at my yard for some ideas. He has some open space in his yard that just kind of opened up, and he wants to figure out what he should plant there. And he came to the conclusion of raspberries. And it, it seems obvious to me because raspberries, along with actually my strawberries down here, are seriously some of the most productive and reliable fruit that you can grow in this climate. I don't know if there's anything really that beats these two. In terms of the production, the amount of fruit, the ease of growing them, it's a joke. I, I plant these things, they do their thing, I almost do nothing to them. And it just doesn't make sense that anyone would ever buy raspberries at the store. It doesn't make sense that anybody would ever buy strawberries at the store. I mean, it's so stupidly easy and i don't know if really people are really getting this man it's it's just kind of it's kind of nuts i mean look at the look at the amount of berries just right here and this is in all honesty pretty immature plants now because we had them over there for years in a raised bed and we turned that whole thing into commercial fig production but we took them out and then moved them over here I even separated them. We separated the Caroline in half. This is a Caroline right here. And then two feet next to it is another Caroline, which you can also see is producing abundantly. If I show you over here, we've already been picking quite a bit off of this particular plant. Um, and they really start up in August. That's really the time of the year that these primocanes will kind of do their thing. That's what's really special about these as well. And why I think they're so reliable is that they have these new canes that come up from the base. You can see that these have already kind of hardened up a bit, but they're mostly green. See these new green canes? What I do is I limit the number of canes. You can see some here that are trying to grow and become big. But what I've done is I limit these at a certain time of the year, probably around June. I select a number of these and only keep it to about six or seven. Once I have six or seven of these canes, they grow, and I cut out the old canes around that same time. Those are the flora canes. The flora canes are two years old, so when this primocane here is done fruiting, it's gonna go through the winter, it's gonna survive, and then it's gonna put out another crop for me in that second year. But that second crop ripens sometime in, um, in June and July, and in June and July, it's just lots of birds and they love red fruits. So I almost get none of them. Also, it's not really a heavy crop on the floricanes. So I kind of rely on these for the primocane crop only. And later in the season when things are um, maybe a bit cooler and actually they just don't stop producing. They actually will continue. This cane right here hasn't actually yet to set anything. And they send out these laterals here. Here's another lateral. You can see this here. Here's a nice crop of fruit right here. And then this lateral has just formed and this one will also set fruit very soon. We'll add, that'll ripen maybe in October, maybe even in early um, November when our first frost is. These guys do not stop producing from August 1st all the way to November 1st. They really do not stop. So for me, it's so reliable and easy to just plant these things and it's a guarantee that I'm going to get fruit in those months because nothing bothers them. The birds are gone in August. They disappear. They don't pay attention to the red fruits anymore. They're not even in the area anymore. Eventually it gets cold. They start to migrate south. Um, the only thing that really does bother these is that when it rains quite heavily, these can start to ferment a little bit. And if they ferment, you have SWD, a fruit fly, in your area, they'll go after these fruits. But if you're on top of the picking, you pick them every day, you get yourself a pint every day per plant, you can make yourself jam, you can have them every day at breakfast, you can just eat them fresh. I love to just come out here and eat handfuls of them. But eventually I get sick and tired of them, I really do. Um, I don't know why I planted uh, so many of them this year, to be honest with you, but um, I don't know, we'll see. There's different colors as well. And this is the last thing I think I wanna, well, we could talk about pruning very quickly or training them very quickly, but this is a yellow raspberry right here. This is called double gold. We also planted Anne, but 
and didn't really make it this year from a young plant that I had planted out. It didn't survive, but you can see here it is. This is a yellow one right here that I didn't already pick. And they can turn a bit pink, believe it or not, when they're more ripe. And if I taste this, it's a very different raspberry. It still tastes like a raspberry, but it's quite sweet. It doesn't have as much tartness to it, that raspberry intensity. Um, it's still got the raspberry flavor. We know it's a raspberry, but it's just a little different. And I actually prefer them a bit more. And if I come over here and I taste some of these reds, which I need to pick these anyway before it rains tomorrow, I try to pick all these guys every day if I can. These are your classic raspberry flavor, far superior to the store quality. They're fresh, guys. Really fresh, but they have better flavor anyway, because these were bred for not only being as productive as they are, for even being erect as they are. I haven't even trellised them, guys. I haven't even staked them or anything. They're standing up on their own, which will probably not happen as they get older and more mature, because they bear heavier. heavier. But they were bred for flavor, these raspberries. This is a really impressive raspberry called Caroline. And I also have a purple raspberry that we'll get to taste next year. The purple ones have a more intense raspberry flavor, a more higher tartness to them. This one's called Royalty down in here. You can see we just planted them out in the spring. And then we have a black raspberry here. I think this is called Jewel, which has a different flavor as well. So if you're really into raspberries, get yourself different colors of them. They taste different. They're just wonderful really are something wonderful to grow. The kids can come out here and pick them, no problem. Um, everybody loves raspberries. I don't know anyone who doesn't like raspberries, to be honest with you. So for me, it's one of the easiest things to grow. Again, I haven't even trellised them, and I know people, that's like their biggest worry with these things. Essentially what I'm gonna do is, because this is in kind of a square right here, we have a missing plant right here, maybe we'll propagate something over here because you can really just pull these out of the ground you can really pull out a sucker from the base and just plant it over there but point is i can box these in i can get myself a wire system maybe get myself a stake right here a stake on the other corner and on the four corners and then enclose that in with one wire all the way around a, a maybe like an 11 gauge or even a higher gauge wire if you want and that's just going to keep them in like a pen and it's gonna keep them from kind of falling over like this and it'll keep them kind of more erect, more upright. And that'll keep them really more tidy as well. Taking up less space, believe it or not. But they already don't take up a whole lot of space as it is. It's really a two square foot plant and that's it. And if you do it like this, you cut out the floricanes every year. You don't let the floricanes get out of control. This is, and you limit the number of canes from the base, it's really just a joke. It really is. I only come in here once a year to really mess with these things, to really get them in order, which is, again, very simply come in at the base, cut out all the old canes. And you can tell when they're old because they're going to be a different color. It's going to be a darker color. They're going to have lignified at that point cut out the old canes and then limit the new canes here to about six or seven. And you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself a no work crop that's extremely reliable, very tasty, and it's stupidly productive. So again, there is just absolutely no reason to buy these at the store, guys, I'm sorry. I just don't, I don't get it. All right, I'm gonna let you guys go now. I think you guys get the point here. That was the raspberries little update for you guys. Maybe we'll come back in and show you guys some of the harvest that we're getting. I don't know. Let me know if you guys want to see more on these. And we'll talk to you all soon, all right? Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the new website, figboss.com. And we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. See you for tomorrow's video.